And in the business news, Nigeria needs to deepen economic reforms and boost government revenues in order to have a sustained recovery after a coronavirus-induced oil price shock that slashed income and weakened its currency. The World Bank's country director, Shuban Children, said this on Friday. He said Nigerians are aware they cannot simply wait for oil prices to recover, as happened during the last crisis in 2016, to rebuild the economy, particularly with the health crisis caused by the pandemic. Africa's largest economy faces a situation similar to the 1980s when it rationed foreign currency amid shortages caused by a recession and currency weakness. Nigeria's current case is worsened by revenues of around 5% of GDP, which is one of the lowest in the world for similar-sized countries. The ratio stood at 8% last year before the pandemic. Ugodre Obichuku, founder of Nairometics Financial and Business News website in Nigeria, now joins us to make sense of all of this. Good evening, Ugodre. Hi, good evening. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you for asking and thanks uh, for being with us this evening. Now, the advice from the World Bank director about deepening reforms is one way we have heard severally, one thing we've heard severally. What economic reforms, in your expert view, should the government strictly focus on during this pandemic era? Well, there are several, several um, policy reforms that the government has toyed with over the last three years. Uh, some have been popular, some have been unpopular. But one that, that comes to mind is the uh, agriculture reforms and um, reforms around being self-sufficient. So this is why you have seen a lot of uh, actions around border closure, um, actions around you know banning uh, of, of uh, access to forex to some exported items, um, you know increasing in custom duties, and this is all driven towards ensuring that we, like they say, produce what we eat. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of those reforms haven't actually materialized. Uh, that's because these things take time to work, and then um, it requires a lot of concept efforts across, uh, you know, different aspects of the economy. Uh, so right now, it, that's basically, uh, you know, where we're in in terms of reforms. And as you very well know, you know, we were in the middle of these reforms when we now got caught up uh, with with COVID nineteen. So the government right now is, is obviously struggling, and the reforms haven't actually worked out uh, as well as they the, they had expected. Uh, to work, so um, they might have to recalibrate. And uh, for some of us that have always said, look, you, know, you can't just have a one-directional, a one-dimensional reform. Reform has to be bottom up. You have to get back, uh, you know, to the basics. And the basic is starting from education, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and a lot of those things that would, you know, help us compete in the world of the future. So yes, it's good to do, you know, a lot of agriculture and self-sufficient reforms. But it's important for everybody to understand that when you do things like that. It's not like creates very valuable jobs. It does create jobs, but not the kind of jobs that can actually, you know, lift a lot of people off the the, the poverty uh, um, 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 levels. And at the same time, um, food prices will be expensive in the short term before they start to dissipate. So um, the reforms have to be a lot more, uh, you know, um, um, be a lot better than what we're seeing today. So that is um, my view of the reforms. The World Bank also. Yeah, I read that report and it sort of alluded towards agriculture, but I think that uh, we need to look more uh, into you know, educational sector, the service sector, and see how we can use what I think we have the most, our biggest strength here, which is population, to mm -hmm. try and get us out of this economic quagmire that we find ourselves in. All right. Mr. Obichuku, the CBN has had a strategy of defending the Naira using our reserves. With the trend of low, lower oil prices coupled with other shocks of the pandemic, is this a feasible policy? Well, um, not, not exactly. I mean, if I'm to answer you straight up, I would say no. Um, we can continue to, um, to you, know, just, you know, help this economy by um, defending the Naira or uh, by um, using our, defending the Naira by using our reserves. Uh, but you got to also understand the CBN's point of view. Uh, on the physical side, we're not doing so well. Um, you know, like you like you said in, the, in your opening comments, uh, Nigeria still relies heavily on Nigerian government revenue has has, has fallen, um, you know, drastically over the last few years. In fact, the first quarter of this year, we're we're at um, um, 2.3 trillion uh, in terms of um, um, sorry, we're we're about 56 percent down in terms of government's. Um, you know, budgetary expectations. So um, 
that is why you're seeing the CBN doing a lot of unorthodox, or they like, like they like to call it heterodox policies, where they use our external reserves to defend the currency. Now, what's the alternative? The alternative will be for the CBN to float the currency, or maybe sort of move towards a more flexible exchange rate regime. And it might interest you to know that the CBN, the World Bank, in giving us this three billion dollars, from what we're hearing, uh, it's likely that you know part of the conditions, uh, you know, if I can use that word, includes perhaps maybe unifying the exchange rate. So um, if that happens, um, uh, what it means is that the CBN, would, to an extent, will still continue to use our foreign reserves to defend uh, the Naira, but you know it rely on it less. And it's important to also note you know, to a lot of your, your viewers that Nigeria is not the only country that uses foreign reserves to defend its currency. There are a lot of countries that do that, especially margin markets. Um, and that's because uh, you always have to rely on you know the greenback, and we're more uh, we're a lot more import dependent uh, compared to export. So if your economy is made up that way, um, then obviously you would always need to have robust reserves so that you can always have positive balance of payments. Balance of payments basically is how much money uh, we've earned in dollars compared to how much money we've you know we've we've uh, we've spent. Mm -hmm. So if we spend more than we've earned, then it's very likely that your, your currency will be devalued. And as of last year. We were in a negative position in terms of balance of payment. Mm. That was why you saw that devaluation that happened in March, uh, from 306 to 360, and then in the um, um, iron E window uh, from about 360 to about 388. So um, that's the situation uh, the CBN will do that would we'll, we'll continue to rely on its reserves to defend uh, the Naira so long as uh, we are heavily import dependent. And then um, we also have a, an exchange rate policy. Where the CBN typically or you know intervenes in um, in the foreign exchange market. All right, uh, let me quickly ask you: uh, uh, with the, in the light of what you said, what impact will the recession ha have on our foreign exchange? Where should we be, you know, expecting the naira to land? <laughs> well, that's that's difficult. It's difficult to, <laughs> to predict. Anybody who tells you the naira is going to be uh, at four hundred or four fifty or five hundred. Uh, I really don't know what, um, I mean, it, it involves a lot of assumptions. So you'd have to look at those assumptions and determine whether those assumptions are foolproof or not. Um, but for us here, I think that um, the, the, for me, what I, what I would tend to look at is the exchange rate, um, for the exchange rate, for where we think the exchange rate will be, what you need to, you, you, you're going to look, have to look at two markets. The first market is the IFEX market. That's the imp uh, importer and exporter market. So that is where uh, Nigeria exchanges, um, uh, where um, investors actually buy and sell Forex at a market determined rate. And then you have to also look at the parallel market, which is where we currently, um, where you know, people buy and sell. So at the parallel market is about 460, while at the uh, official IFEX window, it's mm -hmm. about three, 390. So where, where will it be? I guess it's somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, let's also remember that the economy has been shut down for months now, so there's not a lot of activities going on. There's not a, a lot of activities taking place. So because there's not a lot of activities taking place, it's difficult to really to really gauge demand and supply. All if right. you speak to some people, they'll tell you that there's a demand out there of about $3 billion. But the CDM will tell you, like, look, that's not, what they're, that's not the kind of demand that they're seeing because economic activities is not, it's not working. But in terms of where the exchange rate will be, I think, you know, for me, it will be between where we are in the IFEX window, it's about 388 and then the, the um, parallel market is about 450. So it's going to be somewhere around, around that range. All right. Financial analyst and expert uh, and also the founder of Nairometrics website, Ugodre Obichuku, thank you so very much for your contributions. And do keep safe out there too. You too. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.